who is an associate producer and he also acted in the film. Uh, Shreya Dev Dubey, she shot the film. Uh, he composed the music. Kamal Das is the producer. Sumit Thakur, uh, he acted in the film. And Shomal Kanti Dev Iswas, he uh, wrote the script along with me and produced. And he also acted. Wonderful, thank you. So excited to have so many of here with us today. Sorry, I forgot your question. I was asking about uh, in the beginning where it says that it's to bring your dead friends back. And, uh, you know, it made me wonder how much of this was true story for you. And I wanted to know a little bit about that. I mean, all of it is true. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, all the names are fictitious. Uh, uh, but all, all, all the incidents and the experiences, mm -hmm. uh, everything is real. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And can you talk a little bit about what the writing process then was like working with a co-writer and structuring the story? So, uh, I developed a 17-page uh, treatment and then uh, I presented it to Kanti, Tanaji, and uh, another producer of ours who is unfortunately not here, Theodore Shivdasani. Mm. And then they said that uh, it should be developed into a script and me and Kanti eventually, after working for many months in another Salt Lake City in Calcutta, in a coffee shop. <laughs> a coffee shop. Yeah. So it was a very long process and then like lots of drafts and you know, for a couple of months, and then we came to some kind of a solid sort of form. Okay, thank you. Thanks for explaining that. Uh, well, I want to open it up to the audience and see if anybody has questions for you. Um, so I was curious if there's an artistic reason you've oscillated between English and, and is it Hindi? Uh, there's no artistic reason as such, it's the reality. In Calcutta, people Close speak uh, in Bangla, which is, uh, uh, I mean, Bengali speaking people speak in Bangla. Then people do speak in English, like a lot of our friends, because uh, all of us study English in school. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of Hindi speaking people in Calcutta who have been living there for more than a century now. In the back? Yeah, I just gotta say, you guys know this, but I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever found all the sets? Amazing cinematography, amazing acting, amazing directing, writing. That was the best Ooh. film, the most captivated film experience I've had in a long time. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Really. Speaking of the sets, I was particularly captivated by the plane, you know, the, the crashed or non-functioning plane. So I wanted to know both from a production standpoint and from a story standpoint where that comes from. Uh, but, but that's the only actually place that we uh, we went to this sort of really um, uh, abandoned film studio. Um, uh, it's quite a location actually, which is far away from Calcutta, but it's about five hours away. Um, and they had that plane, the shell of that plane. Wow. Our amazing production designer, Devika Dave, she created the inside of it. Uh, that, that's completely sort of done by her, but the exterior shell we found there. And uh, yeah. even the exterior lamppost, the grass, everything yeah, was there because exactly. Oh, yeah, wow. even the exterior, the, the grass that you see and the lamppost, and uh, I, it's that location is uh, amazing because there was this huge film city that was built, uh, but it was built on completely corrupt money. It was a giant scam, and so when the scam got exposed, that got abandoned, and now it's like it's crazy. There's like uh, half of Rome and half of. Shanghai and, and weird things like And it's that. just abandoned? So you can it's walk, just abandoned and it's you just can like... You walk up and make a movie? No, you, you still kind of have to pay money and, and it's not easy to go there. But it's just like there's like a moss growing all over the giant wow. film city basically. You know? That's fascinating. Go for it. Um, I, have a, I have a question and just um, an, an observation in the, in the scene where they were looking for veins. Yes. It's just mm -hmm. so beautiful. It's such a choreographed dance. I'm curious about um, what you shot it on. Some of the 
sometimes it looked like 16 millimeter film and sometimes we shot it on the nxa mini nxa mini okay mm -hmm. we created a lot and then kind of had it um on the camera and then eventually we lighted for black and white mm -hmm. and it came with the green but there was a lot of um uh leaves and sand and like you know mud on the floor which kind of the dust just like when they were dancing it moved around so it created that kind of texture mm -hmm. uh then they choreographed that incredible sequence yes, you know and the rest yeah, of us just danced with him <laughs> yeah i mean there's not much to add uh, the story behind it actually is that uh, ronnie had a friend who also was a recovering addict and he came in that day and uh, basically he said that him and his using partner when they were trying to look for veins it sort of it almost looked like a dance because you have to like mold your body into different shapes to get a vein to pop out and uh, he said he used to do this in a cemetery and so and also what happens is eventually when all the veins uh, go away the only thing <coughs> left is in your penis and uh, he actually showed us that he didn't have a penis anymore because there's an abscess where it used to be mm -hmm. uh, and actually he kind of pushed us further and further like i mean it looks choreographed but he said no it's even more beautiful when we did it in the cemetery it was even more beautiful so go further go further go further so i don't know i think we just sort of went with it we went with we didn't want to make it actually um, non real or sexual in any way but it just came across that way and uh, also as she said it was a dance i mean it was a very beautiful space which is created for us like there was no one on set it was just the four of us and um, yeah ronnie is an amazing director he just allowed us to like go wherever we wanted to go and shreya just joined it was like a dance with her as well you don't see her in it because she's shooting it but she was also dancing with us <laughs> and then was the music added later because the music was really beautiful I yeah, yeah that was i mean everything was yeah, <laughs> yeah i got like a two and a half hour i saw the first, well, i don't want well, the first major rough cut of the film but i came on board like about 18 months after you started or something yeah yeah so like that yeah so mm -hmm. um, and that 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 was that was sort of that was the big set piece so he was he was using bach uh cello suites over the top of that so there was no no pressure obviously right <laughs> <laughs> so it took me a while to come up with the right kind of thing so when it when it actually clicked was when i realized i was going to write loads of lullabies like because i've been writing lullabies because i had a little i got, had an 18 year old mm -hmm. son at that point so some of them were literally lullabies i'd written for him mm -hmm. turned up in the film mm -hmm. so i kind of basically i did a sort of brahms lullaby thing slightly mm -hmm. inverted and you know, then took it from there and that's how that's how the music for that and it kind of that kind of swinging kind of things which to me really sort of suited the Yeah, so I under underpin that kind of dance. Kind of yeah, cradle song kind of thing. Stefan, I guess to say the movie was beautiful, and I mean that's beyond obvious. It was amazing film. And the acting, it was very harrowing. I was wondering, any of the extras, people were real junkies. I mean, they looked so. No, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Because uh, I was very. conscious from the very beginning of the film that i don't take advantage of people who are using or uh you know what i mean i mean so there were every all of us are real people but uh, there was no one who we picked up on the streets who was using and like that so nothing like that happened actually it was some extra huh? yeah. yeah for the actors research uh we went to a lot of uh, rehabs and we spoke to a lot of recovering addicts uh, uh we tried to understand uh, what withdrawals are like and you know because the whole process of smoking brown sugar is very ritual ritualistic sorry i mean it's it's not like you know you put some powder on the table and you sniff it's not that easy you have to be in a space where there is no air right so mm -hmm. that's the reason they are in a aeroplane and not anywhere else it needs to be in a vacuum uh, that's the reason that the boy smokes in the toilet so you have to be in a space where there is no air as such or any wind uh, you need a certain kind of mat stick which is wax mat mat sticks uh, which has a uniform flame because you can't smoke brown sugar with a wooden mat stick because of yeah that's yeah, yeah that that's why you know it's just a brand of mat sticks but i mean on a wooden mat stick it it's not uniform if you put a lighter it's too hot and it melts <coughs> the foil so it's kind of you know it's very 
delegated fine art to smoke brown sugar. Yeah. So uh, we, so the actors had to go through this whole kind of, you know, that uh, how to smoke and like what happens to the voice when you smoke, yeah. and so on and so forth. It was like for months, you know, there was these workshops and all. So Tanmay and the other guy, like Bang and Portal, Tanmay and uh, Shona. Uh, they basically, because they steal from a shop and they hallucinate and they forget which shop. So they go back to the same shop to sell it. Uh, so they went, like, during the workshop, they went to a real shop and they stole CDs, you know, and they came back to the spot where we were having the workshop and they said that we had stolen it. <laughs> so then I told them that guys just go back and just return it. So they went to return it and the shopkeeper, he, they went and said that, you know, we're doing this workshop for a film, this, that, the other. And, and the shopkeeper was not interested. He was like, who was in the shop then? <laughs> you know? No, actually, yeah, so I sort of ran. That's when I found out that Bang, my character actually is not that cool. Yeah, because, because I felt like, you know, like in the film, like obviously I am the, there's a relationship where like I am the sort of the man like telling him, you, you, I'll show you how it's done. Same relationship with Rahul, the, the guy, the, uh, Pablo. Pablo and uh, Deshik who gets locked inside. But uh, when we went to do the stealing, I just like, I froze. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. So Shona, uh, the actor who played Portal, he had to steal. So that we actually use that in the film then. The film like, you know, I just sort of do the covering up and he actually steals because I couldn't do it. I was really scared. I'm trembling right now as well, thinking about it. Right here. Uh, Thomas, my name. Uh, I wanted to know how um, you and Treya collaborated together as director DP and um, created this world and space. <laughs> um, maybe such a complicated question. I know you should have asked me this in private. <laughs> we all want to know the answer. Yeah. I think uh, we both come from like a background in photography, and that really helped. You know, and finding locations was the first step. And then um, you know that in itself, you know, Ronnie had something in his head, and then he kind of allowed me to venture into his world. And then we would find another location. He would say, "Okay, now this is what it is," and he wouldn't let us go. And then I, you know, I would kind of find the rhythm within it as well. And then we would just kind of we didn't have sync sound, so that really helped to some degree because we could kind of have a conversation while the actors were acting. If I was behind the camera and like. You know, if you didn't like something that I did. Lower, lower! <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that was a lot of fun. But after a while, uh, I think we kind of knew where we both stood, you know. So there was less conversation because there was so much prep that had already been done. So that really helped. Like, if we kind of understood one each other's kind of rhythm, then, you know, it became seamless after a while. And then these actors were so inspiring. You know, there's not much work then that's needed, is there? So maybe. Hi. <laughs> so when, um, from the script level up, I knew that it's going to be a black and white film. Uh, and also a certain kind of black and white film with a certain aesthetic and a vocabulary and a certain kind of energy, you know, with, with a certain kind of contrast and so on and so forth. Like people working with black and white would know that. Uh, but also in my generation, what happened is that after internet came in, uh, it was easy for people like me to sort of look at a lot of work which would otherwise be very difficult. So, I mean, there, there are many different kinds of like, I, I come from sort of, I mean, my, pure aesthetics is a large part of what I do. Uh, so I'm invested in pure aesthetics a lot, uh, in a sort of very purest old school way. And when I was looking for a director of photography in India, it was very difficult. But I was very grateful to <coughs> find Shreya uh, because, the as she said, uh, both of us have this you know background of photography and also we had like photographers that both of us really liked. So it was very easy to talk less and communicate more with Shreya, you know. And it, there were many instances where uh, we just did one or two takes. For example, during the needle 
ballet sequence that uh, you know two guys yeah. finding ways this time so when we found the location we lit it all of that happened when my friend i had called him and then you know he worked with uh, tanmay and kalpon uh, uh, shona sorry uh, tanmay and shona uh, so i went up to these guys and i said that there are only going to be two takes one long and one close up uh, that's all because because uh, i mean i'm not really interested to uh, portray reality or you know tell you how close they are performing to reality and how believable it is for you for me it's more about creating certain magic and miracle and you know because i believe in magic i believe in certain moments which you create and you can never create again you know there are so many moments in the film which were accidents but they were beautiful you know so that's how it was can you speak to like, how the use of brown sugar and um this addiction affects class because i know around here um it's it doesn't really have boundaries anymore especially in the last 10 years or so um and it's kind of like permeated it wasn't just not just like a poor person rural or like inner city drug like here and um i'm curious because one of your characters is educated and it's like there's a mix of ages um and then also um you don't have any female users so i was curious about why that was yeah so the first answer is like diabetes it can happen to anyone rich poor middle class you know so brown sugar is readily available it has been around in our part of the world for 80s if I, 90s 2000 30 30 years yeah 30 years it has been there so and the reason that women addicts are not there because uh see you can do certain drugs okay okay so th there were no women addicts when i was growing up in salt lake and to talk about brown sugar there there are drugs Uh, I and mean, there are other drugs and then there is brown sugar say if you are if you are high on say alcohol or something else then there are kind of you know you are normal you you get high and then you have withdrawals in brown sugar you are either high or you are in withdrawals there is no normal stage as such and you need to have a certain criminality in your whole being your personality uh, to be able to smoke brown sugar because you need money and you know big borrow steel you do anything and then you have to go to a place <coughs> where uh, police is raiding all the time or people are going to be there to beat you up then you have to find a place where you have to hide from everybody else and then smoke so already you need to you know be someone else in order to keep smoking but at the end uh, when he goes to the church rehab place there's a the old woman who or the older woman who plays a song what is her story i sort of assume um she was also on brown sugar but it's actually he's a man he's a very famous cinematographer oh my god i'm so sorry <laughs> okay he's like crazy long hair yeah the with the crazy long hair i so yeah. uh, the character in the film goes in the rehab because the predictable ends of addiction is jail institution death and institutionalized life is also something that i'm fascinated by uh -huh. so when this character goes in if you if you look at the journey of the character in the film he says i don't have a place to stay i have you know put my own house on rent etc for 50 rupees a day which is like 1 dollar a day something like that so he confronts himself with this man who's probably been inside that institution for ever so in a way he's just looking at his mirror mm -hmm. that's all that what institutionalized life mean that maybe he's going to come out use again go back maybe he's taking we don't know but it doesn't mean that you know that he's gone in and everything's going to be fine it's it's never that for an addict it's a you know it's a one day at a time thing right Do you have any more questions from the audience? Do we have time for one more? Yes. I want to know um if this is the first time it's been screened in the US, it's screened before, and so sort of what what are your future plans with it in terms of getting it out in the world? 
uh, but this this was our world premiere. I mean, our, our Sunday show was, was the first show. This is our second show. Um, we uh, we're so thrilled to that our world premiere was in Slam Dance. I think that yeah. couldn't have been a better fit uh, yeah. in terms of festival with this film, and uh, and it's been overwhelming uh, for us. The the responses from the first screening, the reviews that that have come out. Um, and um, we need all that because it's a very small film. We don't have like uh, any big wigs attached to it, um, uh, any sales uh, distribution, nothing. So uh, this is this is our, the beginning of of the journey for the film in in in, in its public life, and uh, we are very excited. We don't know what's in store, but we are very excited. Congratulations! Congratulations! Congratulations.